Lord's Day devotion for July 9, 2023. It's Sunday. It's the Lord's Day. It's the time for the church to get together. All the assemblies of God worldwide, all the people of God, some of them gathering in houses, some of them in giant cathedrals, others in just very ordinary uh, churches, you know, church buildings and cabins, and even in gathering outside sometimes if they don't have a building. We're dedicated. We are dedicated because Jesus saved us. He laid down his life. He expended his entire physical existence as a sacrifice for our sins. He was punished in our place in his crucifixion on the cross. And by the almighty power of God, he was raised from the dead. And that justifies our faith. That proves that Jesus has the authority to forgive all sins. He was raised from the dead. He has the authority to to grant everlasting life. Hallelujah. He was raised from the dead. He has the power of life and death. He has the power to heal. The almighty power of God is in the Son of God, expressed between us and God in mysterious and wonderful ways. God reaching out to us and, and we reaching out to him. What a marvelous privilege it is to be saved. Of all the billions of people, we didn't deserve it. And we still, it just considering ourselves alone, don't deserve a thing from God. But it's because of his great love and mercy and grace every day that he cares for us and saved us. Thank God we responded to the message and received the free gift of everlasting life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All right. So the scriptures okay, came after about an hour and a half of my own personal devotion. And this is an extension of my devotion because I've been going at it since 4 a.m. this morning, bringing this to you. I'm so happy to bring this to you because the power of God is in the relationship with him through Jesus. Jesus at the right hand of God is part of the Godhead, part of the office of God, if you will. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you feel it, Christian? Do you feel it? Today is the day of not only the day of salvation, this is the day of freedom and empowerment in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's get to the scriptures. This is what the Lord brought to me for you this morning. Okay, we're going to go first to James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Then we're going to go to 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. And then we're going to go back to 1 Peter, verse 3. And then we're going to end with 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, thank you for salvation. We receive this, God. We receive this as a, a message from you. Heavenly Father, empower us. Free us even more, Lord, to serve you and to, to express all the things of your Holy Spirit through us, all the fruits of your Holy Spirit, love, peace, joy, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. You know, I thank, I thank you, God, that, that, that the the fruit even of holiness and, and, and other aspects of your divine nature are, are coming through, Father God. You know, you, you've got all kinds of things in you that, that you want to show your children. So we're ready, Lord. Bring it to us, Lord, right now and throughout this week and forevermore in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, let's get to it. All right. Now, if you want to pause right now, and write, write the things down that I mentioned. Feel free to do so. Paper and pen is really good for any devotion. All right? So James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. This is for you, Christian. Keep in mind, every one of these scriptures is personal. It's God's message to you personally, not just the whole church. So take it that way. All right. Verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. 
Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Amen. Okay, pray. Whatever your need is, Christian, whatever it is, you're tired from work, you know, you're, you're, you're having a hard time getting up this morning. Pray. I did it, and I'm filled with the Holy Spirit now. Trust, me, trust the message, and God will reward your faith for trusting his word. He will guarantee. He promised he will reward and bless you. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> All right, so 1 Peter Chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who has called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. That's very important. I learned this through the Word of God and the Holy Spirit and personal experience, that we have to line up with our prayers. We can't just pray, even if we're praying a prayer, prayer of faith, forget about it. We, we've got to stay focused on Jesus. All right, we the the more we put into any relationship, the more we get back. Isn't that correct? Everyone has had you know parents, you know siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, neighbors. You know, we all know the more you put into a relationship, the more you get back, and the more positivity you <laughs> you put into it, the more love and so forth, the more love you get back. That's just the way it is now. More so, all the more so, infinitely more so with God. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. We'll go down to uh, verse 12. Okay, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 12. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Though now for a little while, if necessary, if you've been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be find, found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you have not uh, now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning the salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ in subsequent glories. It, were, it was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which even angels long to look. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Think of all the, the spiritual energy originating from God through the prophets and many people of God 
They all prayed for one another and they even prayed for you, Christian. You hadn't even been born yet and they prayed for you, not even knowing your name. God is, with God, all things are possible. The, these things you're going through in life are meant to be a suffering which leads to glory, a suffering which leads to joy. What, what mother who is pregnant doesn't, you know, go through all the pain and the, the, the you know, the, the suffering of, of, of pregnancy and even, and, uh, you know, uh, child, you know, child pains, you know, the, the labor pains for the joy of, of the baby that's going to be born. It encourages the mother. Same thing in our lives with the things of God. God wants to give birth to things in our lives. God wants to reveal things in our lives. And it's inevitable in many cases that we've got to go through inconveniences and trials and tribulations in order to see the joy which God has set before us. Hallelujah. Lastly, let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. May the reading and meditating on the word of God bless you throughout the week. May your prayers all be of faith and confidence in the almighty power of God and the authority of Jesus Christ on your behalf. May you seek the Lord and get your comfort from him, not seeking comfort from the flesh and certainly not seeking comfort from the things of the world, but from the source of the greatest satisfaction, the almighty God through a son Christ Jesus. Be blessed this week. Go in confidence, go in boldness, more diligence than ever, and be blessed more than ever. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.